Hey, I just wanted to shoot a quick video about my anodizing setup. Um, I just started doing this, <clears throat> did a lot of research. Um, so I just wanted to go through all this equipment and some stuff I've learned. Um, here's the results I've been getting so far. Really nice. Um, this is bronze. I've done two. This one was the first one. Um, I didn't let it soak in the dye long enough and I did not boil it in distilled water, which was a no-no. Uh, I kind of forgot that at the time, I believe. But yeah, the second one came out really nice. Um, no blemishes that I can see. This is just a test part. Uh, it was a product prototype, but uh, I don't know if I'll ever make it or not. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, no blemishes, like at all. Pretty amazing for the first, first try. I'm surprised I was able to do that. So, here's my setup. Um, I am not using sulfuric acid. I'm using uh, sodium bisulfite, or bisulfate, I can't remember which. And uh, that's what this is. This is the actual anodizing bath. Um, let's see. Uh, I didn't want to use sulfuric. You know, it's it's not that hard to get. I guess it depends where you are. Here, you can just buy it in auto parts stores, but you know, it's it's a pretty strong acid. Um, this is acid too. It's, I'm sure, just as dangerous, but it's easier to dispose of. It's a pool of chemicals, what it is. And you can buy it at Walmart for very inexpensive, comes in a powder form. And uh, I saw some other people had some good luck with it, so that's what I'm using. And you know, if I ever wanna switch to car battery acid, sulfuric, I can, I'll just, you know, switch. That's the only step that uh, involves the acid, so it's easy to switch if I want to change. Okay, so here's all my stages. I got Simple Green. This is an industrial cleaner and degreaser. It's from Concentrate. Oh, first of all, all of this is distilled water. You can't use anything else. <laughs> uh, actually, I'm using filtered water, so I'm using a zero filter, which is really inexpensive. You know, here you have to buy filtered water or distilled water by gallons. And, you know, 70 cents a gallon adds up, you know, pretty quickly if you're doing this all the time. Um, so I'm using a zero filter and it actually has, you know, it's worked pretty good. You can, it comes with a tester and you can uh, uh, get your, you know, check how many parts per million. Um, these aren't completely like zero. This is like under eight parts per million for all of this. And, uh, the filters are about 10 bucks a piece. They filter maybe 50 gallons of water, something like that. Depends what your water's like, where you are. So, Simple Green, lye in distilled water, sodium bisulfite, distilled water, and these are my two different dye colors, and they are distilled water and Caswell plating dye. Let's see if I can get this off of there. This one's gray. I haven't done this one yet. The other ones were bronze. Oh yeah, so these containers. Um, I was gonna use five gallon buckets. My parts are, let's see if I have a prototype. Yeah, here's a 3D printed, like rough size. This is not, this is just a rough printed prototype. About this size, you know, fits pretty tight. <laughs> fits pretty easily in a five gallon bucket, but five gallon buckets take up a lot of space. And uh, my shop is, you know, I have room, but I don't want to take up all of it with anodizing stuff. You know, it's pretty tight packed. I've got a lot of workbenches, milling machine, belt grinder, uh, saw, blah, 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 whatever, grand service plate, uh, that, yeah. So that's, I just didn't want to take up a lot of room. And it's nice having it all in one level because working down low is not fun. Um, yeah, so that's all the stages. Except for one, uh, you need a neutralizing bath, which right now I'm just using this little teeny glass container um, for baking soda and distilled water. You need to do that before you go from the acid uh, to the dye bath. So, I, I when I was figuring all this out, I uh, pretty much wrote out a spreadsheet in Google Sheets with basically all the information I could find, all the temperatures, times, all that good stuff. I printed it out on my label maker. Kind of hard to read, but you guys can pause it and look at that if you want. It's Sorry. <laughs> Might uh, post better information later. 
Um, yeah, and the amounts are not accurate on there either. This is, I don't know, I just mixed this standard simple green. This is a half a pound of lye, pure lye. at the container here. Boom, half of this container and one gallon of water. Um, yeah, I went with these containers, two reasons. Um, they are insulated, they're plastic, they have screw on lids, they should seal pretty well. And also they are smaller. Like if I was trying to fit five gallon buckets up here, not gonna happen. There's five containers there, as you see. So my parts are long and skinny. So this is what I chose. Um, I wish, I searched long and hard for taller containers um, that were also skinny, but it was kind of hard to find them. So these will work. My parts barely fit in, but it should work. Um, yeah, that's all the stages. So all of these, these, all these four stages are heated. Um, the other two are not. This one needs to be supposedly between 68 and 72 degrees, which is kind of hard to maintain because A, your shop could be colder or significantly hotter. Um, I've heard of people using frozen bottles of water to cool the bath down. What I'm thinking, because, you know, it gets 100 and whatever degrees here, very hot, 110. And uh, so that's way over the temperature. So I'm thinking frozen bottles of water, plus I'll have to get another heater for this setup because, see, if I put a frozen bottle of water in there and then put a heater in there, they'll kind of like battle <laughs> and keep a stable temperature because a cooler is probably a lot more expensive than a heater is, you know what I mean? So I might try that uh, whenever it starts getting too warm. It's actually technically too warm today. Uh, it was like 85 degrees today. So, and that's just a spring day. But, so, um, yeah, let's see. Um, so 140 degrees for five minutes in simple green. 110 degrees for three minutes. Uh, I found this to be a little bit, uh, that's a little much. Um, I didn't even heat this thing. And it, when you put that aluminum piece in there, it eats it. Like you can see bu bubbles form on it like crazy. And uh, it etches in just a few minutes cold. So I'll have to revise this later, but that's what, uh, I think this is what Caswell recommended. Um, let's see, uh, anodizing tank, um, 15 volts. The amps is for the part that I'm, the larger part that I'm making. But I've heard a couple people say, like you're supposed to use a constant voltage or comp constant amperage power supply. But I, I've seen a couple of people say that you just let it draw as much current as it can and just leave it at, at constant voltage. And that's what I've done, seems to work. Um, yeah, 90 minutes, that's for a, I think a 1,000th film. Uh, neutralizer and uh, the die for, let's see, 140 degrees for 15 minutes. And then you seal it in uh, distilled boiling water for 15 minutes. And doing that, I got these really good results. Um, let's talk about some stuff I learned about equipment. Um, so I was trying to find something really easy, inexpensive. Uh, at first I bought these massive thousand watt bucket heaters and I quickly realized that those things were huge. I mean, they took up a significant amount of space in these. And um, they also, I mean, think about it, 1,000 watts, that's 4,000 watts if they're, well, 3,000 watts if they're all on. <laughs> so that's that'll overload, you know, a 20 amp breaker. These little guys, I found, uh, there was an auto, auto YouTube channel, I can't remember the name of it, sorry. Um, using, he, he, he was looking for the same solution, but mainly just for cleaning. And uh, this is a cartridge heater. I believe it's 12 millimeters by like 80 millimeters, something like that. You take one of those, they are $7 a piece on Amazon. Uh, they come in packs of two. I've got even extras. They're super cheap. They're stainless, so they can survive these chemicals pretty well. Um, and then you take that, you put some um, heat shrink caps, which I didn't even know existed. Put a heat shrink cap on the end, and then you put a really long chunk of heat shrink with sealant, that's what this is. And it's uh, four to one, so it shrinks four times. Oh, here we go, here's a better uh, automobile, special grade heat sink tubing, and it seals, it has like a sealant on the inside. 
Um, it's very important you do not let the sealant get closer to the center than those because the heat from the center of the cartridge heats up really fast and it'll just literally burn it off. So you wanna cut it back. Um, so yeah, that's these, these things are awesome. This is the solution in my opinion for this size of setup. I mean, they're tiny, they work fantastic. Um, then I have these uh, temperature controllers. They are kind of expensive, but I mean, one nice thing is they have heating and cooling. So if you had a cooling unit, you could hook those up to each one. Uh, and it would automatically switch between them to keep a, a temperature within a differential so you can set the temperature differential you're willing to allow, which is really cool. And then this uh, constant current, constant voltage power supply. Um, then I got these big lead cathodes. I have two of them. Boom. Uh, you know, they're pretty long, 15 inches. I cut them that way because I thought it was convenient looking and it seems to work fine. Um, air bubbler. I have my little air pump underneath here to provide, you know, it'll shake, provide further agitation to the uh, anodizing bath. Cause if you get a bubble on there, it will leave a blemish. Or, and also I read that it'll actually increase the temperature of the, the surface temperature, which can affect your anodizing. So don't know how valid that is, but I got a bubbler. So uh, here's the term, uh, the probes, the temperature. And I zip tied these in place so that they're at a reasonable height. And um, this one will go between these two baths. And uh, yeah, you just put the both of them in there and you're ready to go, you turn it on. These things you can turn on and off by themselves or you can just flip the switch and turn both of them on. Uh, I've got a switch back there. I didn't want the cable all the way at the front so the switch is in the back. I might switch that later, but <sighs> what else? Um... Yeah, I guess I'll turn this thing on, so. Uh, I didn't plug the bubbler in yet. I'll do that in a second. These things are kicking on. This one's set for 110. This one's 140. Probably need to switch those because it's like stage one, stage two, stage three. You can hear them boiling. Yeah, they, they put out some heat. I mean, they boil. And the other thing, nice thing is these kind of, you can kind of stir with this. So you can agitate it a little bit. Um, one thing you want to do, anytime you put anything in these tanks, any of them, you got to clean it before you put it in. And you want to do that with distilled water. And um, it'd be best, like, like, let's say you wanted to put something in the dye bath, like the heater even, you know, put it in simple green, spray it with distilled water really, really well, get it clean, then put it in there. Do that for everything. Even if you're like, I don't even know. I can't think of anything. A stir stick or something like that. Or like something to grab something, clean it. Because contamination is gonna be the downfall of any anodizing setup, I think. <laughs> Haven't found that out yet, but I'm pretty sure that's the case. So yeah, these things are heating up. Kind of stir them a little bit. And then, um, yeah, so at every stage, you need to um, basically, so I'm gonna put it in here, right? I'm gonna clean it before I put it in there first because it'll keep this bath working longer. Um, spray it, after you pull it out, spray it really, really well. Make sure you get it in all the holes with a spray bottle. Um, I tried this. It doesn't make a nice spray. It's like, even at the even when it's almost closed, it doesn't make a fine mist, which is what I want. And so I'm stuck with spray bottles. Um, I got a better spray bottle with like, you know, three fingers or something. Cause you know, you're spraying a lot. So your hands are gonna get, gonna get tired. It's like all the time you're spraying this stuff. So yeah, so um, yeah, you pull it up, you spray it. And like you spray the distilled water and it will go back into this tank, which is good because it keeps your solution in there. And it also replenishes any evaporative stuff so boom boom here for an hour and a half uh and then in there and actually i'll probably just well i'm gonna pull this out spray it and then i'll show you what it looks like in that bath over there yeah this thing's already up to temperature 100 degrees or already it's getting close yeah it says 110 of course the stirring helps uh 
make the temperature more even so you can see what it actually is 104 yeah but once the uh, once they hit reach temperature you don't have to do anything to them they just they turn on and off a little bit and but since these are insulated they use a way less electricity and they don't turn on as much yeah so i'm going to uh, pull this out spray it and then put it in the lye bath so just a second all right so i sprayed this and now I'm going to put it in the lye bath. You don't want it to dry also, I think. Watch this. Look at that. It's eating that thing. It's supposed to stay in there for three minutes. So I'll come back in three. Time has passed. I went a little bit longer this time. Look at that thing. Isn't that crazy? Uh, all right, so I'm gonna spray this and I'm gonna start anodizing it. All right, so I'm at 15 volts. Got the uh, thing in there. I'm just using alligator clips right now. I'll make a better bar whenever I actually start making product. Um, yeah, connected to my cathode. Anode. Got this down here, the bubbler. I'm just gonna turn it on. I got these little this little valve right here, so I can turn it on easy. And that agitates so that uh, bubbles don't form on the part. Pretty cool. Um, one thing to note, though, you know, this is acid. Bubbles, popping, stuff goes all over the place. So um, what I'm gonna do, my protocol is gonna be cover this with the lid, uh, like just set the lid on top and only turn the bubbler on when that's going, um, or that's lids on. And also whenever I'm not using these things, lids. And when I pull these things out, the heaters and the probes, I spray them uh, with this distilled as I'm pulling them out to rinse off chemicals that are in them and then before I put them back in I will spray them again put them in so that's uh, kind of the process every time um, same goes for the dye over here and so yeah this is uh, gonna go for an hour and a half and I put the lid on turn the bubbler on and that's pretty much the whole process um, so you just go from here to um, your neutralizing bath which I'm gonna get a different taller container or whatever um, it doesn't need to be insulated because it's not heated uh, and then die for 15 minutes and then you boil it in distilled water. That's pretty much it. Um, yeah, that was a quick rundown of this little setup. This isn't ideal. I'm probably getting like some overspray between these. Oh yeah, gloves, safety glasses at a minimum. You want to have airflow around this too. So, um, you know, you don't want to do this in a closed environment. This is making hydrogen gas and oxygen. So not ideal. Um, so yeah, you want airflow. So yeah, take that. But do your own research on safety because I'm not a pro. <laughs> so yeah, that's pretty much it. Hope that's helpful. If you guys like this style of video, like and subscribe. Thanks, bye.